Do you want to take authentication to the next level in your Angular applications? Well, you've come to the right place because today we're going to take a look at how to display user profile information, how to protect that profile with a guard, and we're also going to take a look at setting up an API in Auth0. Now, I'm Anna Cedri, and I'm a senior developer advocate here at Auth0. And today we're going to be taking a look at just that and a few things extra. So let's get started. To follow along this video, I really recommend that you go check out part one. And you can find part one in the description below. However, in this part of the video, we will be displaying profile information, protecting the profile and external API routes with a guard, setting up an API in all zero, and last but not least, we will call a protected endpoint using an HTTP interceptor. So as you can see, we've got a lot to cover. So let's get started. So once you have your app functioning like this, I've already logged in. Um, and again, just a quick reminder, if you need to get this function in, if you need to log in and log out, which is what we cover in part one, please find the link to that in the description below. So after a user successfully logs in, Auth0 sends an ID token to your Angular application. You can use the data from the ID token to personalize the user interface of your application. In this sample, we already have the basics for our profile component. So let's go to our profile component.ts file. Right now, it's an empty component. So let's start populating. First, we import our or service. So what we need to do is call that on our constructor. And here, my IntelliSense is picking this up for me. But please make sure that you have actually imported that. Now, in our ng-on-int, where we initialize data for an Angular component, we're going to subscribe to this dot or dot user observable. And like I said, we're going to subscribe. In our subscribe here for our callback function, we're going to get the profile. Now, before we continue is we need to set up a variable to our class. We'll add a public member up here called profile JSON it's going to be a string and it's going to default to null. So now when we subscribe to the observable, we are going to say this dot profile JSON. And as it's a JSON, we can stringify it. Pass in that profile null because we want all properties of the object to be included in the results in JSON string and we'll indent by two spaces. So let's just go over what we did here. What we did is we subscribed to this dot dot user observable. Now this user observable is coming from the or zero SDK. And we're doing this within the profile component. Now once this or dot user observable emits the user profile object, we use the JSON stringify here to format the object and assign it to this.profileJSON. So behind the scenes, after a user successfully logs in, Auth0 sends an ID token to your Angular application. Authentication systems such as Auth0 use ID tokens in token-based authentication to cache user profile information and provide it to a client application. Now the caching of ID tokens can contribute to improvements in performance and responsiveness for your Angular application. Now let's go over to our HTML file and display the user information. So what we're going to do is we're just going to maintain this up here. So what we're going to do is create a div and it's going to have an ngf and we're going to use the async pipe here for the user. So we do auth.user and the async pipe say async as user. So we're waiting until the user is available to us. Now let's add a bit of styling here. So we're going to add another div and we're going to use the class 
Now these classes are bootstrap classes, again just like in the previous video. We do have some um, custom classes which you can see here. We need another div. And this time it's going to be a column. And in here, what we're going to do is we're going to have our image. For our profile image, what we're going to do is we're going to add source as an input because we're basically getting this from our user. And we're going to say user.picture. We'll give it an alt of, for example, user's profile picture and a class rounded circle image fluid file picture. Now let's go and check out to see if this is actually working. And there it is, there's my profile picture. Cool. Let's add some more information to this page. For this part, what we're going to do is add another div. This time it's also going to have some classes, going to be a column. As it's going to be text, we're going to center that text. Let's give this a h2 with a user.name. And then in here, we can have, for example, a P. We'll give that some classes. And we have the user email here. Let me save that up. And again, I just want to go and check. And here is my name. And here is my email. Now, this is basically being pulled out from all zero. Now, just to get an idea of what is actually in the profile JSON that we created, let's go and check for that. Let's go and print that out. So what I'm going to do is do this in a div, type row, and I'm just going to put an ng if because if it doesn't exist, then it's not going to show it. Profile JSON do pre-class and here we'll just pass in the profile json here we go and here you can see all of the information that's available to us and this is all coming from Osira like I said so if I were to pull up my profile in all zero, well, this is basically what you would see. Now, if I were to log out of the app, nothing actually shows on the profile, but there's no reason for a logged out user to be able to get to this profile page. So what we're going to do now is we're going to prevent logged out users from accessing the profile or the external API pages. And thanks to the SDK, this is one of the easiest steps to implement. You don't have to write the guards yourself. So let's go to our app router module because we can then add those guards that the SDK provides for us. So inside our app routing module, we just need to import the auth guard. So let's do that up here. Import auth guard. And we need to import this from at auth zero. There we go. Now we're going to add to both the profile and the external API route the can activate. Can activate basically tells Angular whether or not a route can be activated and it takes an array of route guards. So we're going to add the auth guard from the auth zero Angular SDK. And we'll do the same in our external API. Go and save that out and let's see this in action. 
So if we go back to the application, we can see that it's prompting me to log in. Now there are other ways you can configure this if you want, but the sake, for the sake of this video, we'll leave it to the default. And it works just like that, just like magic. Like there's nothing else we have to do. I'm going to log in just to show you how this works. So I'm going to log in with my auth zero account. And as you can see, I have access to these two now. I'm going to log out. And if I log out, you can, if I go to the profile page, again, it's prompted me to log in. So let's now move on and call an API. And we're going to focus on seeing how to get an access token in our Angular application and how to use it to make API calls to protected API endpoints. So when you use Auth0, you delegate the authentication process to a centralized service. Auth0 provides you with the functionality to log in and log out users, which we saw in the first video. However, your application may need to access protected resources from an API. You can also protect an API with Auth0. Auth0 offers multiple Auth0 API quick starts to help you integrate Auth0 with your backend platform. When you use Auth0 to protect your API, you also delegate the authorization process to a centralized service that ensures only approved clients applications can access protected resources on behalf of a user. So what we need to do is open a new terminal and we need to clone the Auth0 Express.js sample. I just want to mention that you need to make sure that this is outside of your Angular repo. Now, once you clone this repo, make the Auth0 Express.js sample directory your current directory. So we're going to cd into that. And we need to install the project dependencies. OK, so what we need to do now is connect the Express API here with Auth0. So let's go over to Auth0. And we need to basically create that communication bridge. So if we head over to the API section, click on this Create API button. What we need to do is then add a name to our API. So it'll be Auth0 Express Sample. We need to set its identifier value. This bit is a teeny weeny bit confusing because it looks like a URL, but it's just an identifier. And we're going to leave this um, signing al algorithm as RS256 as it's the best option from a security standpoint. Okay, now we're going to keep this page open because we're going to need some of the values in the next section. Now, let's go to our Express server. Let's open this up to see what's in here. So what we need to do here is we need to create an M file and we need to populate this as follows. So we need to have a server port, which is going to be 6060, client origin URL is going to be HTTP localhost 4040 or zero audience we will get that in a minute and the author domain so we get our all zero audience from here so if you click on the node.js tab which i've already done you can see here we have our audience and issuer so we're going to get our audience and the issuer. Now that we've added these here, what we can do is run mp start to get that server running. Now what we need to do is we need to configure Angular to connect with the Express API. So if we head back to the Auth0 Angular sample project directly that stores your Angular application, we need to now locate the authconfig.json, which is down here. 
and we need to add an audience and a server, server URL to value it. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to add our audience, we'll leave it at that for now, and our server URL. So our audience is the one that we put here. So it's our HTTP express sample, which I'm just going to copy over, paste it here. And our server URL is the port that we're like serving on. So it's 6060. I'm going to save that out. So now what this is doing is it is establishing a connection between the front end and the back end. What happens in OC in O0 is it uses this information to create the correct token because the token is only going to allow access to this protected API. That way when the API gets the token, it's going to verify it and see if it's receiving a request, a request from the correct audience to determine whether it's okay to send this protected data. Now let's go to our environment file and update it. So in our auth, we're going to add our audience, which we need to um, import from here. And we also are going to put dev and say server url which we also need to import from our json okay so let's go ahead and call our public endpoint to do that we head over to our external api page we are now being prompted to authorize again because we have just updated this let's head over to our external api page and this is basically what we're going to be working on is getting the public message. Now, if we go to our external API component, we need to bring in our HTTP client. So we do that in the constructor, we call private HTTP. And again, IntelliSense is bring, um, putting that up for me here. And we also need our environment. So let's import that. What we need to do is import environment as m and we're going to do this from our environments environment now we can make a function that will call our endpoint so let's go do that we'll call it call api void and we're going to have a this dot http get and what we're going to get is the server URL and API messages public message. We're going to subscribe to that and we're going to get an object with a string in int. So we do result message. Let's add a type for this message up here. So we're going to call interface message and it's going to have the property message of type string. And now we're going to set this dot message is going to result message. And now if we go to our HTML, you can see that we have already set it up to display the message here. So I'm going to add a click handler, which is going to call our API. So let's do click and we're going to say call API. Now let's see this in action. Make sure you're logged in and you're on the external API. You might get prompted to authorize again, like I did earlier, because we have added our audience. So things have kind of changed. Now, once we're logged in, we can go to our external API, like I said, and we can click on get public message. Now this isn't using Osira. It's just like a regular API. 
but our protected endpoint does require our token. So let's see how that works. If we go to our server and we go to messages and messages.router, you can see that in our get request from the server, we have that check dropped or check JWT. And it's a middleware for Express, which is going to check to see if we have that token. But as you can see here, our public endpoint doesn't have that. So what we're going to do is attach our token to our outgoing request. That way the server can pull that token off the request headers and then check to see if it's there. The first thing we need to do to make this happen is we need to import an HTTP interceptor. So let's go to our Angular application. And just note that in Angular, a HTTP interceptor let you intercept a request and then do something to it and then send it along the way. So in our app module, what we need to do is we need to import the HTTP interceptors. We also need the auth0 auth HTTP interceptor, which will be coming from the SDK. Now to actually use our interceptor in our application, we need to create a new array, which some of you might be familiar with. It's the providers array, and it lets us tell Angular what other services and providers to use. Inside of that array, what we're going to do is we're going to create a object. This object is going to have a key called provide, and it's going to be for the HTTP interceptors. We are going to say use class and tell it to use the auth interceptor. And lastly, we're going to set it this um, multi property to true. As HTTP interceptors is a multi provider token that represents the array of registered HTTP interceptor objects. So we need to set that to true. Now we need to configure the auth HTTP interceptor. In our configuration object, there's actually a property called HTTP interceptor that takes its own options object. And we're going to give it an allowed list of URLs that we want to work with. So we're going to say m.dev server URL forward slash API messages protected message so we can use our environment and basically match it with this now what we're doing is we're telling all zero to only add the token when it matches this specific url now let's go to our external api component to add this functionality we are going to just duplicate this call api method and we're going to call it call secure api and change the url to protected message. And if we go to our HTML, um, we're going to do the same thing as before. We're going to add a click handler, but this time we are going to call our secure API. Now let's see how this works. To get a better understanding, let's open the network tab here, and I'm going to click on first the get public message. Now, if I click on here, you can see that there is, well, there's no token added here. There's no authorization. However, if I click on the get protected message and we scroll down, here you can see our token. If we copy this and go to jwt.io, uh, we're going to paste this here. It actually shows us the payload. Here you can see my issue and audience, and this sub here is basically like a user ID. That's all for today, folks. Now, if you'd like to see any other Angular related content from me, please let me know in the comments below. And, well, Bye until next time.